So, how's it going? Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about how to program EWS out of your uh, E36's ECU. So, if your EWS module dies, um, usually you can get around it uh, by just uh, you basically bridge two ports on the actual plug itself. So sometimes when you delete your EWS, um, it or by like bridging the two ports, right? Um, what can happen is most of the time you're fine and it just lets you start the car and it's, it's totally okay. However, um, there are instances sometimes and I've been seeing it a lot, come up a lot in like my comments section for one of my older videos uh, where people aren't able to start the car. They can get it to crank over, but it doesn't actually start. So um, I did some digging and it looks like you actually have to basically trick the ECU into thinking that EWS just doesn't exist anymore. Because when you're, when you're bridging the ports, all it sees is that it's just not getting power. So uh, let's take a look at how we actually go and trick uh, your ECU into thinking that. It's really easy, by the way. So if we take a look at this page right here, we can see uh, there's all this information about these different bytes uh, within the ECU. And what we're actually looking for right here is bit seven of byte eight. So um, now that we know that that's what we wanna target, we want to change whatever that, or that value, which on a stock setup would be zero. We wanna change that to a one in order to uh, delete the EWS. Basically, that's all it is. So there's this beautiful piece of software that is completely open source called ROM Raider, and I'll have a I'll have a download link in the description. Uh, just make it easier to access. And so when you install it and open it up for the first time, you will likely find something that looks like this, just a big black screen. It's totally okay. Um, what you have to do is you have to establish the definition for uh, E36 ECUs. And I'm, I might be wrong uh, with my understanding of this, but basically it's like, uh, you could look at it as like the architecture for how this program reads um, uh, essentially all the data that the ECU stores. And uh, so along with the download link for the software itself, I'll have another link as well that points you towards the E36 definition. Um, and so once you download that, all you have to do is you come to this definition manager and then uh, you just come over here, go to add, uh, you know, pick or, uh, the location that you downloaded the definition into and you just add it, hit apply, hit save, no big deal. So now you need to get your hands on a, well, on your tune, basically. So uh, this is where, uh, unfortunately, a little bit of having to buy things comes in. But if you get one of these guys, um, just literally like a OBD2 to USB cable, um, these are pretty much like the, the standard, they're like $12. You can literally buy one off of like eBay. Um, not a big deal. You, the biggest thing is you wanna make sure that the uh, this cable that you buy has an FTDI chipset in it. And essentially uh, what you'll find is a lot of your options don't. Um, and really the big difference there is that the FTDI chip basically allows you to read what's come or like what's stored inside the ECU, but it also allows you to make changes and then write to the ECU where I believe the other chipset is just one way and it's in terms of reading. So FTDI chipset, it's like probably $2 more expensive, not really a big deal anyways. So along with that, there's a piece of software called MS41 uh, Quick Flash. And I don't have this installed on my computer right now or else I would show you but uh, basically it allows you to actually interface with your ECU from your device. So like a laptop or something that you decide to install it on and just read, write files, um, 
and you can also log data on it too, which is really nice. So basically once you've pulled your, whatever tune you have on your DME, um, you know, ideally like a stock tune, but not, doesn't really matter. Um, what you can do is you want to open the image. So for the sake of demonstration, I have both of these images pulled up um, and they're basically, it's basically you opening up the, uh, the tune, if you will. So then what you want to do is you come here to control bits. Um, so, and you'll come to byte eight. Cause once again, remember that we're trying to change bit seven of byte eight. So open up byte eight. This is what it should look like on a stock tune. It should have a decimal value of 30. So if we take a look back at this web page, we can see, um, you know, it's just a bunch of zeros and ones. So, Basically, in order to get this, these numbers, which is just a binary value, in order to get it into a decimal value that you want to actually input into ROM Raider, uh, what you have to do is you just go to a, you know, you just take the binary number and convert that to decimal. So in this instance, so we have this decimal value of 30, right, for byte eight. So what we want to do is we'll want to take this value and uh, convert it to binary to see what we're working with. So what you can do is come to something like a binary decimal converter um, and switch it so you're going from decimal to binary. And then you take this 30 value, you just type that in, it spits out the binary value. So basically um, we have eight control bits because it goes from zero to seven, so it's eight total. Um, but you'll see that this has a five digit number, not a big deal. That just means that, uh, the three numbers to the left of this one, 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 zero are all zeros. So it just didn't get displayed, which is fine. So, uh, what we want is we want to take that seventh bit and flip that to a one instead of a zero. So now what we can do is we remember this. I'll just go ahead and copy that. We can switch from binary to decimal, paste that in, put in two zeros and then a one right there to represent flipping that seventh bit to a one. So now we can see that our decimal number that we're interested in is 158. So uh, we come back to ROM Raider and uh, what we would essentially do is just take this byte eight right here and just put it uh, put in 158, hit set, boom, you're good to go. Um, now what you do is you basically just save it and it'll have you save it as a new image. Make sure that you leave a, that you leave the extension dot bin afterwards. Um, so that way you, your ECU can actually, you know, accept the, the flash and read it and control everything from it. Um, and then that's, quite literally it, um, you're, you're good to go. So include a bunch of documentation, uh, in the description for actually for like regarding the process of actually flashing your car, just because sometimes it can be a little finicky, uh, having to jump certain ports on the, uh, diagnostic kind of port in your engine bay. Uh, to kind of put it into like a dealership tuning mode. But I, I mean, there's so much documentation that it, it's really not a big deal. Honestly, if you just take the time to read through it a little bit and uh, kind of follow the instructions and it should be totally fine. Um, but yeah, uh, so anyways, um, if you guys like what you saw and if you want to see more videos like this, uh, be sure to leave a like, subscribe and uh, yeah, uh, I'll see you in the next one.